Hey YouTubers, I've had a horrible time uh, with alternators going out on my LS swapped vehicle. We've been running a straight 12 volt ignition source to this B terminal on our alternator. Well, we're pretty sure that's why the uh, regulators in the alternators keep going bad. Because you swap out the alternator, whether it be used or new, and it uh, works perfect for a, a little while, you know, depending on how much you drive it, then you'll see uh, it'll start charging a little more and a little more. Pretty soon you're holding, driving down the road, you're above 15 volts. Next thing you know, it's uh, charging out 17 plus volts. And then all of a sudden it just stops charging because it just burns out the regulator. From what I've been able to find online, trying to research this, which is absolutely ridiculous. Why people can't give you straight answers, I have no idea. So I guess the, the um, general fix for this, I, I guess, is that you can use your B terminal at your alternator, but you have to run a 470 ohm resistor between your keyed 12 volt and your B terminal. And you can buy little kits online that actually have a two wire hookup, which would use your B terminal and your C terminal. But again, if you're going to hook up your B terminal, you have to have that 470 ohm resistor wire. When you put in a 470 ohm resistor on a 12 volt source, what does that reduce the voltage to? Try to find that online. Go to any forum, do any kind of search that you can come up with. See if you can get a straight answer from anyone on what that voltage would be. I couldn't find a clear answer. None of the people I know could find it. A um, couple of mechanic friends I had said that it should be your 8 volts. Because that four, uh, 470 ohm resistor is supposed to drop your voltage like 4 or 5 volts. So I'm like, okay. So we're looking around 7 or 8 volts. That sounds reasonable because we were guessing somewhere between five and eight volts. So I go out today, just out of curiosity, I have a 2000 GMC Yukon, same alternator setup. I thought, well, I'm gonna pull the, I'm gonna pull the connector off my alternator. I'm gonna just see what kind of voltage am I seeing out of the B and C terminals. With the key on and with the key running, the C terminal, provided nothing. It had 0, 0.00 volt. The B terminal, both key on and engine running, supplied 10.2 volts to that alternator. Okay, so now, you know, we have a concrete real world number that shows the, you know, unmodified factory harness 2000 Yukon is given that B terminal 10.2 volts. Are they lowering that required voltage to the alternator too far? Or is a 470 ohm resistor not reducing the voltage four to five volts like everybody thinks, and it's actually only reducing it like two? You know what I mean? But there again, I've tried using those online calculators because, you know, no one can tell me for sure. When you buy one of them 470 ohm resistors and put it in line for that uh, 12 volt keyed source, what is your end voltage? Now you're asking yourself, well, why do you need to know? If it works, just put it in there. I had purchased this DC to DC voltage reducer this is the same if you can't even see it it's upside down that right there let's see if you guys can see it that is a 470 ohm resistor right there but the difference in this setup is it's adjustable when i hook this to power and ground i'm going to have a keyed 12 volt source here my grounds are going to go to my firewall, and this pink wire goes to the alternator B terminal. When I put power to this thing, this thing's going to light up 
my full battery voltage, I can turn, well, number one, I can push this little black button and I can adjust the outlet voltage wherever I want it. Anywhere from, uh, it says a maximum of 30 volts in and down to one and a half volts. So what I was gonna do, or what I'm doing now, is I'm installing this on the blazer to be the exciter wire for my alternator, but I had a simple question. Just a simple question. I thought anybody, I, you know, the internet's gonna not let me down. Google's been there forever, right? No one can tell me what that stupid 470 ohm resistor everybody recommends reduces the voltage to. Because, you know, if I have full adjustability of the voltage going to my exciter wire, why wouldn't I set it to exactly what GM wants it to be? Find that information. I challenge you. This is my craziness that I came up with because I can't really fit under the dash of my stupid car. It's a huge pain in the neck. So I was trying to find a way to run that or mount this open circuit board DC to DC voltage reducer safely under my hood. And I came up with the uh, poor boy solution, just a little $2.33 uh, first aid kit box from Walmart, a couple of grommets and a few, you know, terminals and some wires. Let's throw this thing on the blazer, power it up and see if it turns into smoke. But got the battery hooked up. Double checked all my connections. Let's turn the ignition switch on. I can tell you right now, I have a complete one volt drop between the battery and the front of the car where it connects to the alternator because at the battery i verified just before i installed the battery it's charged at 12.9 volts and right now you can see it's showing 11.9 at the dc to dc converter push the outlet chain if you see where i push that button it's showing 11.2 on my outlet Voltage. I cannot adjust that adjustable DC to DC reducer down any farther than the 11.2, 11.1, 11 11.2 I had. Uh, I've been sitting here letting it warm up. And it's still showing 11 volts. You know, when I tested my Yukon, it was at 10.2. So I wanted to at least get it down to 10.2 or lower. All right, guys, I'm just trying to monitor this thing because it looks like it's pretty much coming up to temperature. Looks like 186 degrees. Um, before I started it to let it warm up, it was showing a full volt lower on the gauge under the hood and on the holly dash than what the battery was actually holding so we started out about 11 9 and the whole time we've been sitting here it's been kind of staying between 11 7 11 6 and 11 9 i'm not even 100 percent sure that alternator's charging and it i had it completely checked at the advanced auto parts and they gave me a printout that showed it past every phase of their little bench test. So I'm gonna take it for a short cruise. If it starts dropping volts instead of uh, gaining volts, I guess I'll go from there. Cruising about 2,000 RPMs or so. It's charging decent, I mean, almost 13. I made a mistake and I wanted to show you what it was maybe the keen viewer would have picked up on it but I woke up out of a dead sleep this morning 
and thought, <laughs> I know why that reducer didn't work properly. It's kind of hard to see. And I can add an inserted picture if I need to. I wired it up yesterday where the power came directly in this grommet into this side of the board. And then the outlet went to the alternator out of the bottom of the box. I totally overlooked the reality that this side of the circuit board is what goes to the power. This side goes to the alternator, which is totally my fault. But I was so set on having my digital readout facing the right direction that I mounted it in the uh, first aid box in such a way that I, I don't know, I guess I got ahead of myself, was trying to, you know, do the common grounds together at the stud, and then just totally hooked it up backwards. So now the trick is going to be to put it on, put it back on the blazer and find out if we burned it up or if the stupid thing still works. All right. Well, you guys, you guys missed a heck of a smoke show because it literally smoked there's no insulation on this wire at all. From there all the way to my power source at my solenoid. All right guys, full disclosure. This is what can happen when you try to do things too fast and you second guess yourself. I don't know, I can blame myself 100%. I did it. See my super cooked non-insulated wire and all this insulation it burned off it's my own fault when i mounted the box to the blazer's firewall my grounds smushed into my power wire i don't know it's hard to see but right there my grounds cut into my power wire and so it just was a dead short to the firewall which is wonderful I love it when that happens. This thing has been a challenge, but I was self-inflicted injuries. So basically, uh, you can see where I took both ground wires on both on the ins and the outs of the old motherboard there, whatever you want to call it. Put them to a one of the bolts that used to hold the windshield wiper motor. Then correctly this time, hooked up the inlets and outlets to their appropriate feeds. So, it should be set. I set it on the bench at around 10 2. Let's see what it shows. Okay, so it, it's holding its setting. I can go all the way down as low as 1.5 volts with this setup. But online, everyone was saying eight volts. Like a general consensus was you only need eight volts to excite your alternator. Well, who, which is right? I mean, is it the general consensus, consensus or opinion on the internet or what I read directly off of my stock vehicle? I don't know. I have it all installed. I just have to, I'll probably start out with it set at 10-2 unless somebody can show me that I can reduce it down to eight and not have any issues with uh, burning up the regulator or anything inside the alternator. So that's where I'm at. It makes for a pretty clean installation. I mean, as far as, you know, boom, close the lid. Uh, what did we decide? Uh, don't ask Jeff to do wiring projects because he apparently sucks at it. Other than that, I'm pretty happy with the outcome. Took several attempts, but it did happen. That's the important thing. So I just wish there was more concrete information on how you're supposed to set it up. So please like, subscribe, and share.